So today's interview is going to be with a presenter and her name is Hope Ellen. So um, I'm going to invite her on and we're going to be asking each other questions. So it's kind of going to be like, I'm going to ask her a question, she's going to ask me a question. So it's going to be like a multi-interview, you can say. So I'm going to um, invite Hope on to the live stream. Thank you all for logging in. I hope you are doing well, obviously, during this time. So, oh, there you go. Add her now, we can get straight into it. Hi everyone, thank you for logging in. Hi Celestia. Hi! Hello! How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Busy day it's been. Yes. <laughs> How have you kind of been doing in quarantine and during this time? It's been good. I mean, my whole life has switched upside down because I live in London by myself now and I've had to move back to Norfolk with my parents. Oh. Yeah, so it's very different. <laughs> but it's it's going well. Yeah, can't complain. I think, I think it's been a whole new routine for everybody, I guess, in a way. It's very different for everyone. So yeah. as long as we just stay together, we'll, we can all get through this. So exactly. the first question I'll, I'm going to ask you kind of is to introduce yourself to the inspirators yeah. if they don't already know of you. Cool. Well, my name's Hope. I am presenter, content creator, and anything else, really. I like getting stuck in, having a laugh, and... Yeah, making making great content and empowering people to be themselves. I definitely love that. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you like start or get into presenting? How did you know that that was something that you wanted to do? So for me, I think it was kind of, it worked as an, an escape from some personal things that was going on in my life. I was working in a white collar job as in an office and trying to climb the ladder there. And then I was like, you know what? I don't. I don't want to do this and mm -hmm. I used to want to be a presenter but because I didn't go to university I thought it was out of reach for me um but until I saw, started seeing people like Maya Jammer and other people like that doing well with presenting without getting that degree so I thought well if they can do it I've got a slice of that I can do it too yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I started doing um started a YouTube channel just doing videos of album reviews because I thought well I better choose something that I like talking about and I need to start putting something out there and see what comes of it so I started doing that, contacted loads of um, production companies in London, started going to London for weekends to do some work for people, doing green screen and auto cue and all of that jazz, and then fell in love with it and haven't stopped since. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And now, my time to ask you a question now, I think. Yes. Okay. So you obviously inspire other people all the time, hence why your name <laughs> is Inspiring Vanessa. But what <laughs> inspires you? Um... I mean, my mum inspires me because mm -hmm. she's always been like my biggest supporter. But otherwise, I'll say what kind of inspires me to do what I do is just like thinking about how helping other young people to kind of grow their confidence and grow their self love. Because I think there is a very big gap in the younger generation. Yeah. And I think we need to go branch into more schools or just kind of get to know more young people and just kind of nurture them and actually give them the empowerment that they need to kind of grow up to be these incredible adults who want to do what they um, have always wanted to do in life so mm -hmm. I think just thinking about and yeah just thinking about how I can help other young people to kind of believe in themselves more is definitely something that inspires me. And when you see that when you've spoken to someone and they've gone on to do great things or they've changed their way of thinking does that make yeah. you feel really good? I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, helping people has always been like my passion. So it's just like a great feeling inside yeah. when you know that something you've done, obviously, you know, obviously you think that it's going to work because it's your idea, but to mm -hmm. actually see it yeah. in action, actually get the feedback from other people is just an amazing feeling. Of course. <laughs> so, the right, question have... <laughs> <laughs> so the question I have for you is, what do you think has been the biggest challenge in your journey or just trying to do presenting or grow in the industry? I mean, I think a big thing is um, comparisons. So comparing myself to other people who are doing mm. what I want to do, which I know is silly, but it's completely natural to feel jealous at times and yeah. to want something that someone else has got that you're striving for. So it's completely natural, but I feel like that is a big one for me. And I think, my main problem is having a work-life balance and being in lockdown is definitely teaching me and has made me realise that I do need to start balancing out my life a little bit more 
Um, it's really good to have dreams and have passions, but there is more to life than just that. So I need to make sure that I'm prioritizing building friendships and relationships with people and having a social life because I don't really have one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh, I totally agree with you. I mean, I think it's all the time with everybody that I know you see someone on social media, mm -hmm. but just even like as you were saying yourself, it's like we're always very quick to like compare ourselves with other yeah. people and kind of point out what we like about that person but not what we actually like about ourselves mm -hmm. so I definitely agree with what you were saying yeah and I think we are as, as humans a lot harsher on ourselves than we are on other people as well. yeah except remind yourself that you are a great person and that you're running your own race and it's all good yes. <laughs> there's a message there all right over to me so I've seen that you've met some amazing people like Jacqueline Wilson, who I used to be a big fan of. Yes. But who has been your favourite star to meet and why? Um, oh, there are so many. <laughs> um, I would say the main person is Zendaya. Mm -hmm. She's always been like my biggest idol since I was like, I don't know, eight or like six years old because I, I watched her on Disney Channel on yeah. Shake It Up and, and, and Casey <laughs> on the cover. So... I feel like whenever I just saw her on the screen, it just kind of made me realise, because I saw myself in her, if that makes sense, because I would never really see someone on my television who looked like me. And I think I just, it was just a massive inspiration for me. So when I actually met her twice, so grateful. Um, it was just like... Not just once, crazy. twice. <laughs> twice. It was just a crazy experience. And I was just so over the moon that I actually got to meet her. So hopefully one day in the future we'll actually get to do an interview and we'll actually get to properly have a conversation because obviously when you're meeting celebrities, just quite hectic as everybody wants to get a photo with them and have a conversation yeah. with them. So hopefully one day we'll get to properly meet and sit down and kind of talk about talk about things. Yeah. For those people who may me haven't ever met their idols or had the chance to interview someone huge, what kind of feelings does that give you if you take yourself back to how that felt what kind of emotions were you overwhelmed with i mean i felt quite emotionless as a matter of no, fact okay. because when i was just there in the moment it just kind of like you feel like you're in a dream and then when you actually get yeah. out of the dream you kind of realize what just happened so the first time i met her i was just like completely in awe and then when i got the photo <laughs> i was like so we're walking back home and i just burst into tears because it almost like I just realized it's kind of like you know that that is actually yeah. going on but then you actually start to consciously realize and comprehend what just happened so I think it's an amazing feeling I mean interviewing anybody who's like in the public eye or that you've always looked up to for a long time it's just an mm -hmm. amazing experience to actually have a conversation yeah. with them and hear their perspective on things and can be scary as well <laughs> yes it can be very scary and it hectic scary. it can be like that so what advice would do you think you would give to an individual who perhaps wants to do TV presenting or wants to be a radio presenter? I think the main thing is just to go for it. You need to start somewhere. And I would say that you don't need, if you're going to start like a YouTube channel or something like that, because you want to get some content out, just use what you have. Yeah. You don't, you don't need, sorry, someone just made me laugh. You don't need to invest in a camera or a microphone when you're first starting off. Just use what you have. And then if you like it, then for sure you can invest later on. And in terms of radio presenting, I mean, I started off doing hospital radio when I was at school. Um, that was quite helpful to get my foot in the door. But that wasn't where I started loving it. I think mm -hmm. when I got to London and I got onto Vibe, where I am now, that's when I really realised that's what I wanted to do. In a proper studio with the microphone and you're in control. Very scary but you have to go for it. And I think if you're chasing your dreams and you're out of your comfort zone, that means that you're doing the right thing for you. Yeah, I think- Don't stay comfortable. Everything, yeah. Take risks. Whatever anybody wants yeah. to do, always take risks because like so many people that I've spoken to, it's kind of like, oh, how did you start? And it always, or like them finding their purpose has always begun with taking a risk or being out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So that is just like a living proof um, that anybody who wants to do what they love or has figured out what they want to do is just basically by yeah. taking a risk. Exactly. You just have to start somewhere. Yeah. Doesn't matter where you start, just start somewhere. And I mean, I think a lot of people who want to be like do TV presenting, they might do courses. Mm. Um, but I didn't do a course and I wouldn't recommend doing one unless you <laughs> maybe 
unless you're like a not a non-confident person if you're quite shy and you want to be yeah. presenting then maybe going on a course is the right way to go about it but for me I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to become a robot mm. do you know what I mean yeah so I think it's just just try it try it That's what yeah you do. I mean I think everything is different for everyone so whatever people want to do so if you want to do like a training or like an online class just make sure that yeah. as, as you said yourself don't become a robot still be different and still be um what's the word for it kind unique, of just yeah. one yeah just be unique <laughs> that's basically what we're trying to say so anything that you do as long as it's leading you onto the right path yeah yeah and i mean your path will change definitely it won't always <laughs> you might think oh, i want to do this and then you start doing that and you're like actually i prefer doing this yes <laughs> it's like um last year i um was in a I can't get the words out. I was in a pilot episode for a show. So I was asked to do acting. And I'm not an actress. And I always said <laughs> I would never do acting. Ever, ever, ever. But I actually loved it. So, and I would do that again. So that's something, that's an example of how I was like, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so just try it out. Life is always about the unexpected. Exactly. <laughs> My turn for you. So you modelled and catwalked at Mini Mode which I've actually been to before doing oh, press, amazing. which is quite interesting, yeah. Um, tell us about that experience. What was it like being a model down the catwalk? I mean, well, the first time I kind of came across Mini Mode, I actually presented um, the show twice. So it was always really exciting to speak up on stage and actually mm -hmm. like speak to the people and the audience and introduce the brands and actually see everything behind the scenes. But this time around, I was like, because I did some catwalks before that, and I was like, Mum, this time, I think I want to apply to actually be a model for the um, catwalk, just because I fell in love with the atmosphere. Right. So when I actually got to be picked to be one of the models and work for the brands, I was super excited. So obviously I get to make new friendships, and I also get to kind of witness what it's like to be on the different side, or like from mm -hmm. a different view from a big event so it was an amazing experience i would definitely do it again would you yes certainly. i've done, done modeling once when i was at primary school and i remember i had this partner and i bumped her but i bumped her off the stage it went really <laughs> badly and i wouldn't do it again <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should try again maybe you'll fall in love with it or maybe you don't want to <laughs> <laughs> i don't know we'll see we'll see we'll see <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say is your favorite part about what you do I think the biggest thing is that as a presenter, you just get to be yourself most of the time and you get praised for being yourself. Yeah. How great is that? You get clapped and you get well done. You get the recognition you deserve. For just, for just being yourself. That's, which is great. Um, and I think a big thing for me is the people I've met. I'd never thought of myself as a creative when I was at school, like drama, didn't like, music, didn't like, and art, didn't like, no good. So I didn't <laughs> see myself as a creative person until I started doing presenting. And I was like, actually, I love this industry. And I jumped mm -hmm. straight into creative side of things. And now I produce my own content and I've written a film and I want to write a book. So now that I'm in that zone and I've met so many different people who are creatives and they're just, I'm not, I haven't come across a bad creative yet. Yeah. And they inspire me. So, and everyone's just got a common goal and a lot of people are willing to help you out for, if you need something for free, they'll help you out for free because they can see you've got potential, stuff like that. So yeah, that's a big thing for me, the people. I definitely agree with you. I mean, people can be supportive and then there can mm -hmm. also be people who don't understand what you do, but I think it's yeah. just like the mindset that you're in because maybe when you were younger and you didn't realise that you were a creative person, it's probably because you hadn't learned things that you have learnt now. That could also be one of the reasons why you didn't exactly. know that you're a creative person. So your mindset makes a massive difference towards what you do. So thank goodness you are doing what you do and inspiring loads of people. <laughs> exactly. I think it's my turn, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you have been a motivational speaker for four years. Yes. And for my calculation, <laughs> you're only 13. Okay. So let's rewind. How did it start for you? And what started off? Um, well, I attended an inspirational seminar. And one of the speakers there that I was following um, online at the time, he was like, Vanessa, you should come on stage with me. And 
to be honest, my first reaction was, I definitely do not want to go on stage. And that's simply because I was <laughs> a very introverted person. Yeah, that's probably my reaction. Um, I was a very introverted person. I mean, I still am. I do consider myself an introvert rather than an extrovert. But um, mm -hmm. I was just really shy and I didn't want to speak on stage, especially that it was unexpected and I was unprepared for it as well. But my mum did give me those encouraging words, like, this is a great opportunity. Just go on stage. Nobody's asking you to do a TED talk or like a 20 minute um, talk or speech. So I was like, okay, if I just quickly go on stage and jump back off, then it'll, then it'll be over and it will just be done. So I was like, okay, let me do this then. So I went on stage and basically said to the audience, believe in yourself, love yourself, go and follow your dreams. You know, there's different things that I had seen like, Mm -hmm. on, like on the internet from quotes coming out. Like, audio books that I was listening to so I was just kind of like yapping whatever came to my mind and then when I came off stage something just clicked mm -hmm. it, it's not really a way to to explain it but something just clicked because people started to give me feedback who were at the event like that was really great thank you so much for what you said and I was like okay <laughs> was not expecting that at all so I kind of had to realize for myself that speaking on stage and also helping people at the same time that was a massive thing for me the fact that I could talk and also be able to speak on stage and help others that was something that I definitely wanted to do so then I just kind of fell in love with it and fell in love with meeting new people and attending different events that's kind of how it all came together the first thing you had to do though was what get out of my comfort zone and yes. try it take a risk exactly yes. <laughs> And the last question I have for you mm. is what do you say is the best advice that you've been given and why? <sighs> There's been a few. Um, <laughs> when I first wanted to be a presenter, I reached out to a lot of people, a lot of celebrities, a lot of people who were doing stuff. Um, not everyone got back to me. Yes. Melvin O'Doom from Who's Been Kiss Breakfast, who's now on Radio 1, he got back oh, to me. Cool. He sent me a lovely message and that encouraged me. Um, and there was someone called Chabuddy G, who's from a BBC comedy show. I didn't actually watch the show, I just, I messaged him. The same message I sent to everyone. Yes. And the big thing he said to me, because at the time, in my uh, Instagram bio, all my different bios, how I said who I was, was aspiring presenter. Yes. And he was like, don't say that. Don't say aspiring. If you are a presenter, then you're a presenter. Get the word aspiring out of there. And then I think that helped me get more opportunities and form, feel more confident in myself because I was like yeah, yeah actually if I want to be a presenter I am a presenter I don't need to say aspiring um so yeah I think that's a big one for me so if you want to do anything don't need to don't need to tell everyone that you're yeah. trying to do it or you're you're hoping to do it or you're chasing your dreams to do it just say you are and then you are <laughs> just own it basically exactly you yes give it. yourself your own title because when you start to believe that other people will as well so I definitely agree with that that's a that's a great piece of advice so I would Isn't imagine it? that helped you quite a lot as well. Yeah. Thank you, Chabuddy G, whoever you are. <laughs> <laughs> My last question for you then. Obviously, we've got this COVID-19 situation, which is not good. Um, but what are your future plans for the rest of the year when this is over? <sighs> or, in, or in 10 years' time, what's your big goal for you? Um, I will say my big goal is to hopefully be in a TV show. Okay. So I definitely would love to bran branch in more into the acting industry. So that's been one of my biggest dreams as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, after when all the events are up and running again and the venues are open and life kind of goes back to normal, you can say. Um, there are a couple of events that are probably going to be coming up at the end of the year because they mm -hmm. would have been like around this time, but obviously they're not. So um, more events like that. Hopefully kind of branching into schools as well. So hopefully that'll be happening as well kind of speak to the young people and actually give them the empowerment because some kids obviously don't go to the inspirational events won't be able to yeah. hear the information that the speakers are giving so actually having myself go to the school and they can relate to somebody who's around the same age as them maybe a bit younger maybe a bit older but the fact that I'm still a kid or a teenager they can kind of relate to me and see if she can do it then so can I if she's been yeah. through what maybe I've been through then so can I can do what I love to do, or I can stand up for myself, or I can grow my confidence. So, I mean, I don't really know what, what the future holds. As long as it's something that I obviously am passionate about, then I'm excited to see what happens. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for chatting to me tonight. 
Thank you. I think we have two questions. Here. Oh, do we? Okay. Um, what is your YouTube channel? I wrote that. Oh, okay, mine. Um, it's just Hope Ellen. That's literally it. I think I'm the second one down. Someone else has the same name as me. <laughs> what kind <laughs> of content do you post? Oh, yes. oh, I do all sorts of different things. Um, so like I said on, in the chat, I started doing um, reviews um, of albums and um, singles. And then that went on to Netflix reviews. And then from there, I developed a cooking show called The Hopeless Chef. I've got another show called What You Up To, where I interview different creatives. I've got uh, another show called Pandemic Pamper, all different beauty oh. regimes that you can do in lockdown. For that natural is really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love to start another one. Uh, I've started another one called The Lockdown Diaries. And that's probably, uh, it's a new show, and it's definitely just me being honest and moaning about lockdown. So people are quite liking that one because they're like, oh my God, it's showing the real you. And I'm like, yes. It's not always Hello, Hello, Hope 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 it's like, Ugh. yeah, exactly. I think people like that. And I, I definitely want people to feel encouraged to be themselves and to be honest. And yeah, so. And it's good to show negative sides of people as well because it's so, it's, social mm. media can be such a, you have to be happy and positive and blah, 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 blah. And not everyone always is. I'm rambling. I'm rambling now, but that's definitely what I was It's saying. fine. I definitely <laughs> agree with you because it's like so many creators or celebrities or influencers, whatever you want to call it, people who are big in the public eye, just think if I tell everyone the successful parts of my journey, mm -hmm. they'll relate to me. But actually, not sugarcoating what you do is going to bring people closer to you and it's going to allow people to relate to you more. It's going to make you more realistic because exactly. we are all still people at the end of the day. We are, still, we are still humans. We will have bad days. We will have really great days. We will have setbacks. We will have the times where we actually get mm -hmm. the job or we actually go to the event that we've always wanted to attend. So I definitely agree with you. So everybody, go and subscribe to Hope's channel and also follow her on Instagram. And this has been a really great interview. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. You have a lovely evening and try and enjoy lockdown as best you can. <laughs> I will try. Otherwise, I need to have a lot of work to catch up on to from school. But we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. You can do that, Peter. That's fine. <laughs> All, right. All right. See you later. It was lovely to speak to you. Bye. Right. Bye. So that is the end of this interview. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, if you would like me to interview you on my Instagram account, don't forget to go and message me here on Instagram. My DMs are always open. I am reading them. So if you'd like to be interviewed on my Instagram, I'll be sure to read the message and hopefully we can um, arrange that. And also, as I said before, go and follow Hope um, on her Instagram and her YouTube. But without further ado, I'll be seeing you guys on the next Instagram Live. Bye.